All right, folks. Well, we'd like to welcome you to another edition of Unless the Lord Builds the House. My name is Pastor Roy Arismendez, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Kim Arismendez. Kim Arismendez, my beautiful bride. <laughs> and so we uh, just wanted to talk today about something that, if you're um, married, is going to be very relevant, or if you're just really a human being trying to make your way through the world, is going to be very relevant. And that's really the topic of communication. And not only just communication on how to communicate verbally to somebody, but really all of the other things that go with communicating, you know, and how we really um, just, you know, approach our communication with, with, you know, our spouses, with believers, with unbelievers, you know, how do we, you know, learn to be better communicators from a biblical perspective? I mean, what do you think, honey? Well, I think that we have five senses for five reasons, <laughs> which is simple, right? So then um, I believe the Bible talks about our eyes, our ears, our our mouth, our hands, you know, mm -hmm. just the touch, feel. You smell, know, taste. S smell, taste, yeah. I think there's a Sunday school song that's go, be careful little eyes what you see or be careful little ears what you hear for the father up above who's looking down on us. So be careful. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a reason for that. Um, you know, as hard and difficult it is to control those things, it's possible with discipline. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, the bottom line is what we say, how we say it, how we communicate is, is important. And because I think what really spawned this, you know, this topic today was just miscommunication in, you know, our relationship, because it's so easy to say what you don't want to say. It really is. But it's sometimes difficult to say what you really want to say. Right. Because, you know, in and of ourself, in and of the human nature, if we're not walking in the spirit and we're not really seeking to have a relationship with ev with people in general the way that Jesus would, which is really from a humility standpoint, always making himself less. You know, if we're just doing our thing our way, chances are we're going to be, you know, um, not really listening carefully to how and what other people are saying. And things get miscommunicated very easily. And so you end up hearing things the way that you kind of want to hear them rather than the way maybe somebody said them. You know, and so it's it's really a like I really do think it is a discipline thing, like you said, to really um, make an effort to listen, not just hear things, because you can hear something, but what is he really saying? What's that? What's the message in that? And so you know, miscommunication happens so easily. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's if you know there's any emotion involved at all, right away there's a a spin on the communication that's happening. And things can get taken the wrong way. Next thing you know, disagreements can happen, you know, and even worse than that. And so really, I think about what Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1 says this. It says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So, I, you know, the, the Word of God is telling us, I think it's instructing us through this book of wisdom that is Proverbs and the entire book of Scripture that's wisdom to really you know, think about what we're saying in response to things that are coming our way. You know, obviously in a marriage, that's that's crucial. It's key. You know, we are emotional people. We're emotional beings. We have good days and we have tough days. But it's reminding us here, like, hey, a gentle response can really arrest something that wants to blow up into a huge situation. You know, the spirit of this world and the enemy is, is to destroy, to divide. Right. But God's spirit is always to bring unity. And so, I mean, how have you seen in your spiritual growth, in your life, you know, that your response to things, you know, has it changed? Has it grown over time? Has the Lord given you any more gentleness in those things? Or do you personally find it something that you're still looking towards <laughs> overcoming? I, I want to say that there's there has been growth. Um. Because I one of the one of the thing about myself that I know is I don't like to stick in the same spot too long. In regards to if there's something that's going to be um, 
you know, um, bringing down my character, making me upset or angry. I'm not going to dwell there for long. I'm going to mm-hmm. find a solution <laughs> to to rectify that. So in regards to uh, communicate in, in regards to communicating and growing in certain areas, especially with uh, communication, um, I, I believe it has grown, and it it's in regards to the way in um, in which how I see the situation mm-hmm. and um, how to address the two as well, and just recognize it. I personally, within the years, you know, I think situation repeat itself but it just looks different that's mm-hmm. what i think so it's like okay probably it's not the the entire length of the probably a scenario that i've come across but probably a little quarter of it or three quarter of it but mm-hmm. hey probably i could i could bring in um i can tackle it from this point i mm-hmm. can adjust it at that point um but the end goal should be um you know happiness joy peace in the holy ghost that's all. Well, I mean, like you For said, me, it, just being joyful. Life's situations keep happening, and yeah. so, like, while you don't find yourself always repeating the same patterns, there's there's still things that need to be, yeah. you know, in our attitudes that need to be dealt with. Yeah. So that's really interesting because you came from a big family. I came from a small family. Right. You know, as far as I only have one sibling, and we're seven years apart, so we didn't grow <laughs> up having the best communication right off the bat. I mean, he was just a little kid and I didn't want him around me because he annoyed me. (laughs) And so my communication to him was big brother to little brother. But you were the last of five. Right. So typically when people find themselves in that spot, it's very hard to have a voice in a house like that. So was your communication style growing up, you know, loud and obnoxious, just trying to be heard? Or were you quiet and timid and just kind of following your siblings' leads? Yeah, so I was kind of like the tomboy in the family. So my older siblings didn't really have anything much to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> I just played in the backyard and did my thing because, like, like you said, there was a huge gap. So I just did my my. I played my games, played with my my friends, and my cousins, and um, didn't really like. I think the closest person I probably had a growing up had a relationship with was my sis my sister that was. Um, were two years apart um but other than that everybody that was older did i really played with (laughs) Mm -hmm. with i think now i have a voice and now we communicate because and it's not um we communicate because i'm older right (laughs) but not that they didn't love or care for me they did but it's just that it was so everyday had the one thing that was going on exactly so they you you just were a kid and older siblings. It's hard mm-hmm. to hard to communicate. Now yeah. that you're older, yeah, it's easier to communicate on the level of because of life experiences. But still, it's difficult to communicate sometimes because of who we are mm-hmm. in Christ, and you know, and and just and who other people choose to be, and not just family. So, because really, the thing is now our communication is is based upon wanting to communicate the gospel to people. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just looking for a voice or an opinion in the middle of a, a large family anymore. It's wanting to have, you know, a voice so people can hear the word of God and they can be drawn to a level of faith. And it's it's mm-hmm. challenging like I said, because we have to really overcome internal issues first mm-hmm. before we can become effective communicators, I think, of the gospel. You know, and what I mean by that is like if you've grown up always struggling to have a voice in a large family and, you know, having to be loud was your way of getting heard. Well, you transfer that over to trying to be an effective communicator of the gospel and it can get tricky real, real quick, you know, because the Bible tells us without 1 Corinthians 13, the famous love chapter, it says, unless you have the love, that compassion that the Lord had, you just make it a bunch of noise. And so I think myself, you know, um, I, I never, you know, had to fight for a voice in a family versus the siblings, but I, I I could say that I, you know, didn't have much of a voice to my parents, you know, and, and most of us could probably grew up in families where the pre- parents were busy, they were working. I know your, your mom took care of the home. She had a lot to deal with with five kids. And so your communication with your parents can shape a lot of the way that you handle communication going forward. And I found that, you know, not really having a an open dialogue with my parents growing up into my ni- in, into my teens, into my 20s, even into my 30s, you know, it really did change the way that I communicated to everybody else. I 
you know, had never really been vulnerable to them. We didn't have a vulnerable relationship back and forth. Now it's changed now that, you know, I'm serving the Lord and they're both serving the Lord. But it's before it was real, you just from a place of, you know, just guarding yourself and not wanting to be vulnerable, not wanting to be hurt and trying to overcome insecurities. And so, you know, I believe that when the Lord started to li- deliver me and I started to overcome those things, then I really became very more, much more effective in communicating the gospel to people because it wasn't coming from, you know, memories of, you know, just listen to me. You know, I wanted to be heard and, you know, I, I need to, you know, it's, you did to, you know, affirm me and those kinds of things because the Lord brought that into my life and then I wanted to bring that into other people's life. And, you know, and so, but it took time, you know, so. This is why, like, you know, when, especially on an evangelistic standpoint, we have to be, as the Bible tells us in the book of James, verse 1 and 19, it says, be quick to listen and slow to speak, slow to become angry. You know, right. that is a, that's a pretty tall order for a lot of people, yeah. you know, but this is something that we're commanded to do as believers because it's not enough to just see what people are doing, see how they're acting, but God's concerned with why they are that way. The gospel is meant to address the why, not just the outward actions. And so this is something that, you know, really has to be mastered. Yeah. You have to learn and discipline yourself to be able to actually hear and listen to what people are saying so we can start to really address the root issues of why they're saying those things. I mean, right. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's it's going to be an ongoing um, uh ongoing challenge in our life but we should be getting better in regards to like i was uh sharing before it's like there's like there's certain things that you realize okay i on i see i see the same pattern i see what's happening all right well okay um there's my my little red flag oh my little siren that's going out okay hey you know the end result of this. It's probably going to make you upset. It's probably going to cause you to, you know, um, offend somebody. So attitude, conduct, character is very key, important. And then I, um, I, and as it on goes in life, as you grow, I think you're going to handle difficult situations. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, they're going to be ones that's going to be offended. You probably might lose a few relationships too mm-hmm. as well in communicating. But I, I, I do believe that having the right heart and attitude behind it and not just uh, a, a godly heart and a godly attitude towards it and um, and its truth in conversation, man, it's um, I think that is when growth is taking place, mm-hmm. you know. So it has to, as we, in regards to communicating, you know, once, you know, from... The, the Holy Spirit that lives in your heart, there's a clear conscience in there, you know, in regards to your speech um, and what you say. I believe that, you know. Well, you know, our words have the power, you know, what our words don't literally contain power. We're not word of faith people like that. But our words have the ability to really either lift people up or tear them down. Yeah. Especially in a marriage. And this is, you know, how we started the kind of episode today. But oftentimes we find ourselves kind of offending and hurting the ones that we love the most. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> Not that you've done it. <laughs> That's so funny. But why is it that it we true. tend we tend to take shots at the most vulnerable people, you know? And this is how marriages are, are torn apart, though. You figure if if I obviously know things about you that other people don't know. I see sides of you other people don't see because you're my wife and you see mine. For me to use those things against you as a way to get back at you or to hurt you or, you know, just to take a shot and is really evil when you think about it. It yeah. really is from the devil because it's, you know, I had preached a sermon recently, you know, related to the armor of God. It would be like finding the weakest spot in that armor and then, you know, taking a shot there on somebody it's because you know where that spot is. You know, I mean, it's. It really is a bad thing when you think about it, you know, and we've all been guilty of it. Yeah. You know, I don't think there's a married couple alive that could say that they've never taken a cheap shot at their spouse, but we have the ability to really build each other up. Like, why don't we spend more time doing that? I mean, what do you think? <laughs> what's the, what's the issue here with, with, 
with people in, in mm. marriage, you know. I think, well, a lot of things could be medical, like women have hormones. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good one. <laughs> hey, blame it on the hormones, right? But no, not necessarily, because I, I do think that, I think because you said the word, right, because we're so, we know this person so much, we feel like it's a easy, it's the easiest one to, but mm-hmm. it shouldn't be like that. Right. Because um, it should never be like that. It should be the most... Um, the person that we love and adore at all times should be a protected yes relationship. Yes. But also to um, you know, the foothold that the enemy has and he wants to bring that separation. That's the only thing I can think of, because um, unity is strength, mm-hmm. and we where there is no unity, there is division, and you know how can a, a house stand? Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to fall apart. So I do believe that one um, tactic of the enemy is to just, you know, plot, um, plot, um, just that five Se- you know, seeds of discord in, in marriages. Yes, for sure. absolutely. But but that should not be the excuse. I think recognizing and immediately, you know, being able to reconcile. Mm-hmm. You know, even as scripture says that, you know, don't let your rod go down. Don't let the sun go down on the the rod, right? So immediately like, hey, being able to um, address. And I want to say that we're good at that. Yes. We are good. We're we're better seven years into it now (laughs) than we were at the beginning. (laughs) Yeah, we're we're better. It's just being honest, being candid. You know, we didn't, we haven't had the perfect marriage. You know, it's. It's been beautifully imperfect <laughs> to coin <laughs> some of the phrases of our times, you know, but it, it's been it's been awesome to see the growth, though. Yeah, absolutely. It's been, a, it's been a good thing. Yeah. And it even shows the the power of the Lord being able to um, change and transform if we allow him to, mm-hmm. you know, and we seek his um, his word. And his um, his wisdom in the marriage. Yeah, because I, I I think it it's really a matter of unity. Because where there's unity, the word of God tells us that there's blessings. God brings blessings, commands blessings, and so the enemy knows if he can, you know, keep people together but turn them against each other, he's already won. Yeah. It doesn't really matter if there's a divorce on paper or not. If if people lose confidence in each other, now that can happen in many many ways, obviously. But you know, um, but just not lift each other up verbally you know and start to just not be like we said in james chapter 1 verse 19 not be eager to hear and listen then um you know you feel like oh well you know he doesn't really care about my day and he's not really concerned with what's going on in my life it's always about just him and this or you know vice versa you know it starts to divide people it's and then what happens is and i've seen this happen in marriages over my life uh friends of mine you know and acquaintances and people we've gone to church with in the past that when one spouse feels like they're not being heard, they, they stop talking. They stop sharing things that are vital to keeping a marriage, um, you know, keeping it strong. They stop sharing hurts. They stop sharing insecurities. They stop sharing concerns and they pull away. And we know this can lead to many different other ways. It doesn't always lead to adultery and those kinds of things, but it can because people were designed to to have companions. And so the Word of God tells us two are better than one. The threefold cord is not quickly broken. So the, the enemy knows that if he can pull us apart, if he can, you know, break our. Have, there's a communication breakdown. He's got a foothold in breaking the relationship apart. And so whether it's that's why we we say in vows traditionally for better and for worse, right. <laughs> we we've got to communicate. We we've, we've got to be honest about our you know what we're going through and where we're at, especially. If you're serving the Lord and you're in ministry, because ministry is not easy. You're dealing with people, various personalities, lots of challenges in that. And so what I've found, and I think what we've found, is the more vulnerable we've been towards each other, the stronger we are in relationship to other people. Mm -hmm. It's a really awesome thing, because if we've become one, then it's no longer myself, it's no longer you, it's us together. It's our team that is plowing the field of ministry. And so if I can't be who I am, if I can't 
have you there to uphold my imperfections and pray me through stuff, then who's going to do it? Right. I mean, it, it's it, but we see marriages like that. Yeah. I've seen marriages like that where the man, you know, mostly the men that I've seen who are in ministry trying to do the work of, that God's, you know, but the wife, it's not that the wife isn't totally supportive, but they're just not that, that perfect helper in that not upholding him and not really just, you know, and you can, you know, praying him through those things. It's kind of like the man's ministry and then the family's doing their thing. Yeah. And to me, it's just, it's a sad thing because there's such a strength yeah. when we're on the same page, man. I mean, I literally feel like, yeah. you know, I, I, we could, I could preach and raise the dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how it feels when you're right. supporting me. Yeah. And I know there's similar things for you when I'm supporting you and I'm there for you. It just brings a strength to the marriage. Right. You know what I mean? And, so we have to discipline ourselves to be, you know, vulnerable and humble one towards another in a marriage if we're ever going to really see, you know, a, a spiritual breakthrough right. in our personal ministries. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree with that. Um, you know, being able to share in each other's um, wins, successes, mm -hmm. our weaknesses, you know, what better way? You know, um, and then we, we, I think those are ways of being able to grow, you yeah. know, grow in a appreciation of what the Lord has blessed us with and just, um, just seeing the, the, the Lord move in areas like that. It's a testimony to as well mm -hmm. to see what he can do when we come broken before him and, um, but also to when we, uh, we, we're rejoicing. Mm -hmm. So, Well, we know that it's important to be a good listener, mm -hmm. communicate effectively in a marriage. What about, this is a challenge for a lot of people in the workplace. You know, if you're a believer and you're listening to this program, chances are you've, you've tried to be a witness in the workplace. That can be really difficult. Yeah. Because typically what happens is that they'll come at you with a ton of questions, throw a ton of stuff at you, but they don't really want to listen to your answers. And then you start to answer a question and a second into it, they're like, oh, yeah, you're just you always want to say something. <laughs> oh, you're not giving me a chance to talk. It's the funniest thing. It's definitely not a fair yeah. playing field in the workplace. So how do we become better listeners, effective listeners with a desire to communicate the gospel in the workplace? Yeah. And how's that work for you? I think the work fit, the workplace settings for me would be that at first you just got to gain people trust by your character. Mm -hmm. So I, I've never went out to the workplace, just a heavy bat, but they would know that I am a believer. That's the mm -hmm. first thing. Cause that's the only thing I'm going to talk about. Oh, what did you do over the weekend? Mm -hmm. Well, I went to church <laughs> <laughs> and did ministry with my church and, um, and just enjoyed that. I didn't do all the things that probably other people look forward to do for their self, you know, for that, that weekend is much more, is all about, you know, what they can gain. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's all what I can give. And um, so I've never went into the workforce thinking that, man, I'm going to get everybody saved and I'm going to, man, respond. I've never done that. If it's anything, they've always come to me, mm -hmm. you know, um, with, with um, you know, probably with questions or, you know, something I, I guess to kind of correct what you're saying though because i know what you mean you, you said that you've never gone into the work for workplace thinking that you're going to get everybody saved i mean you have but what you were trying to say i think is you've never gone in there with um you know like forward in yeah i'm just going there to evangelize well, today yeah, yeah right right but yeah. your expectations your prayer is always to see oh, people come to ab work. absolutely i didn't like right put my going to the workplace and just Right, you just know, start preaching. Be that, yeah, I've never done that. I've always, I've always went in, and I've already, you know, in conversations, you're already, you know, building. What, okay, what your coworkers are dealing, or what their life is at, or where they're at with the Lord, mm -hmm. and then you wait for the opportunities when you can give a word in, mm -hmm. or there would be at times when you get an opportunity to speak up and you know this is what my view is not I, I don't agree with this music or i don't agree with with doing that you know mm -hmm. so i wait for those opportunities and and i've seen where that have been much more 
there's much more, um, you know, that point went through, they knew where you stand, rather than somebody that's constantly, every day, just going straight forward at it. Right, and so, th- and that's that's the thing. So I've done both. Right. And this is why I, I can speak on this with a decent amount of, of insight. So I've gone in, guns blazing, you know, before, because of, I, it's almost like I had to prove to myself that I had the ability to do that. Because when I came back to the Lord, you know, when I came to the Lord really genuinely in my late thirties, you know, um, you know, I got, it was on fire and, you know, feeling like, man, I really want to grab a hold of this. And so I got a job and went in, you know, guns a blazing and, uh, and, and it just wasn't met with a good response, you know? And so, and I've had variations of it over the years. Sometimes, you know, I mean, I've been called into the office before, you know, at one job and they say, Hey, you can't go around just preaching to everybody all the time. Okay. And so once you have a couple of those conversations, you realize what they're really saying is just keep it a little low key. And so what I found is like, and what really started to dawn on me, because at first I struggled with the concept or the idea that I'm just not being legit, you know, I'm not being an effective, you know, believer or Christian because I'm not going just preaching to everybody at my job. Then I remember one day just kind of looking at my paycheck and seeing the name of the company on my paycheck. I'm thinking, well, they signed my check. <laughs> They're actually trading me my time for productivity in this job. And so I'm my job, at least from nine to five or whatever it is at this place, is to number one, work for them first. So once I started to think about that, you know, once I got in order with what I'd signed up for, it became much easier for me to be effective in my communication towards people because they saw by my work. Just like you said, they, they began to see my character. Not just what I was saying, but they got to see what I was doing. So that it, it grew over the years. And, you know, the last job I held before starting our business, um, like I said, I had gotten, I, I went into this one totally cool. You know, I'm just going to work, do my thing. But they already knew, people knew that I was a Christian going in and part of this ministry because some other guys that worked there. And so it was just like stepping into a minefield. I mean, no matter what I stepped on, it blew up. And so I didn't have to look for any conversations at that point. They were all coming to me, just like you said. Well, what about this? Well, what about that? And so I kept, you know, once again at this job, got sat down, pulled in the office and talked to you about sharing my faith. And and I had to tell my boss, it's like, well, people are coming to me. <laughs> I mean, they're, if they ask me a question, I have to give an answer. Right. You know, and so it it became much more of a um, a test for me there to really be quick to listen and slow to speak because I knew that. I wasn't in a physical battle there. It was a spiritual battle because everything that he was telling me didn't make any sense because people could spew whatever they wanted of me. But if I gave an answer that included the name Jesus or church or repent or sin or any of that stuff, I mean, it's immediately like, hey, you know, you, you could be written up. Right. So it was just, it was, it, it was a total, you know, hi- hypocritical stance that they had there. So I just learned to deal with it. But my work really testified, you know, when people could see saw how I was on my job, saw how I treated other people, saw how I, I mean, I, I would pray with people, you know, that we did jobs for and, you know, while other, the guys who worked with me were just kind of looking around. And so I found ways and then, you know, just being able to get these, know these guys and letting that, you know, I mean, I had a tremendous amount of witnessing opportunities at that job. And, um, and I know that made an impact there and I felt good about that. But I'm thinking about what, here's the thing, that, uh, that the Apostle Paul tells us in the book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. He says this, and I think this is really key to being an effective witness in the workplace. He says, let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you'll have the right response for everyone. Mm-hmm. So he says, let your conversation be seasoned with grace. What, is the, uh, what does your translation say? And we could put NL, uh, NKJV or something. Because mm-hmm. I got this in mind is the NLT. So I'm kind of interested, uh, but I, it's to be gracious in our speech, you know, and I think about grace as obviously the influence of the Holy Spirit upon our life. And so that means that I want my conversation to always be influenced by what the Spirit wants. And the Bible tells us that God's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to a place of repentance. What do you all got? right. So the, um, the New Kingdom version said, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one. And the American Standard Version said, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, 
that e me no e ought to answer each other. Well, somewhat okay. the same here. Right. So let our grace, let our speech be graceful, seasoned with salt, essentially. Yeah. So grace influenced by the Spirit. Salt really is that that preserver, I believe, preserver of the truth. Mm-hmm. And salt also adds flavor to things, you know, so mm-hmm. you want it to bring a a something attractive, I think, to the, to that person. But really just always being gracious so that you'll, you know, have the, and I think this is the key in the NLT, have the right response in yeah. every situation. Yeah. That's the key because there's, people will come at you very similar ways, mm-hmm. but their response isn't always identical because this is the thing. It's like we're going back to the beginning of the conversation. You're dealing with people who are emotional, who have life issues, mm-hmm. and not everybody's background's the same. We don't know where that person is standing, coming from, you know, regarding their communication towards us. Were they that child that never had a voice, you know, and, or were they that person that was always drowning out everybody else's voice? Right. And so we always have to let the spirit lead so we can have the correct response yeah. in those times. And I think that's where I personally had gotten into trouble a few times because I just, it was kind of a one response answer for everybody yeah. rather than, Lord, give me a heart how to communicate to this particular person here. Right. Like, what is there? What was, you know, let me listen to hear. You know, here's an example. When I was working at one of the local stores here, and right before I, I quit this job to move to the other job, um, I was working, you know, in a kitchen with a bunch of ladies. I was the only guy. Maybe those two other guys, but they worked different shifts. It, it was it was tough, a tough environment for me. You know, I mean, there were nice ladies, but I mean, just a lot of, like you said, female emotions and, you know, hormones. And Well, there was this one lady who opened in the morning and... Um, she was a tough cookie. I mean, she was rough. None of the other ladies liked her because she was just a million miles an hour. And she was just, you know, rude. She was she was rough around the edges. And so I remember they, of course, when I started working that morning shift, they put me kind of assisting her. And I'm thinking like, man, this is, this is awful because I just cannot, you can't communicate with somebody who doesn't. I mean, she was basically like, if she, we had tasks to do, she'd just do it all rather than say, hey, can you help me with this or that? So I had just had to kind of work myself in to being an effective assistant or helper to her. And But I remember just determining in my heart one day because of the way that people treated her, the, the other ladies talked to her, and they're like, oh, Miss Jane, she's, she's man, just, she, you just leave her to herself. You know, and that's what they had come up with, just mm-hmm. leave her to herself. And I just remember thinking, it's like, well, Lord, I know you put me here for a reason. I know I'm on my way out of this job. Man, I, I want to have a witness to this lady. Like, I want to be effective to her. And I just began to pray for her and pray that the Lord would give me directive in that. And, man, he just began to somehow supernaturally make me, you know, I mean, I can't even explain it, but it was almost like he opened up a door of communication between her and I. And I don't even remember how it happened, but I just began to listen to her, ask her questions, and wait for responses. And I don't think a lot of believers... You know, a lot of times we'll do that enough in workplace, especially in the workplace, ask people questions. And so I remember the Lord just gave me the ability to just, he just gave me the you know, questions to ask her that I think that she was interested in answering, you know, qu- questions about when I started to realize certain things that she liked, a way that she liked, she liked things, I would ask about that. Well, where'd you get that from? Or, you know, who taught you how to do that? Or and was that your mom that showed you how to do that? And I would ask these open-ended questions so she'd have to give a response. And what happened was over the course of a little time, I think she she started to understand that I actually wanted to know about her, that I, I was concerned with who she was as a person. Right. And so, the man, the door started to just crack open, and then it eventually just opened all the way. And, I mean, by the time I resigned from that job, I mean, we had, you know, a very, you know, open relationship communication-wise. I got to share the gospel with her several times, prayed with her because she had some, you know, turns out that she was, you know, you know, really alone, didn't have much family alive. And uh, and I remember just all the other ladies around, they saw that. They yeah. saw what happened. Yeah. They saw that, you know, I was able to crack through that armor. But it wasn't me. Mm-hmm. It was the spirit that brought gracious mm-hmm. speech into my life or the ability to speak with grace. I said, Lord, you got to give me a, a, a way into this. Yeah. You know, um, and that's really the challenge. I mean, I know you work in an environment where it's a little rough as well. A lot mm-hmm. of people claim to be believers but really don't. Mm-hmm. walk this thing out. I mean, how's the Lord been working on you with a gracious attitude, really trying to be yeah. effective minister in there? Because they all consider themselves believers. I mean, that's really tough for you. 
it is it is tough i mean it's a big challenge but um um i i believe like the lord have shown me ways to you know to be effective and it will it will mean that sometimes you don't laugh at the funny jokes mm-hmm. it's not even funny mm-hmm. you know you you know you do your job you do it together it, uh, as it required but you're not obligated to you know be their best friends mm-hmm. you know and um but i've learned over the time is that you know i would ask about you know you know about themselves about their family about their kids show interest in those areas and also just you know um if some if there's something about probably a health issue or something of an event or something like that just you know to keep that open door going mm-hmm. um has there been times of just um, mockery and laughing and stuff like that? There has been. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes y- y- you're the one that's being laughed at. But, you know, um, just knowing that the Lord is working all of that out because sometimes you have to take take it like, take mm-hmm. you know, be the one, mm-hmm. the the weird one, the awkward one, you know, the one that's being laughed at. and But... There's always, I've always seen, there's always where that, where, where they're the one that's always come back and one I'd apologize or looking, you know, for some sort of sympathy or, you know, conversation mm-hmm. and, you know, you just... Or really, prayer. Yeah, yeah. Pr- prayer too as well. And, um, but I've seen, I've seen the Lord that just move in ways like that and um, really, um, you know... On it on on your worst days, you think that things can get as worse. He always um, there's always a victorious moment. Mm-hmm. If it if it means that somebody's asking about hey um, hey I need prayer, hey um, does your church offers this service or help people and some so there's always they they know mm-hmm. they know who to come to right. I mean I at, think at, that's at, key. at it yeah. And even one time we had um, you know like like you said everyone claims to be believers but somebody had a question about something in regards to um something that they saw and um just you know after their um, discussion they're coming to me and asking what is what is my input in regards to that and just being able to to give that final Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah well i mean uh, you you said something you know that they always end up coming back they mm. oh, yeah. might be the mockery for a little while but or for a long time yeah. but people come back and you know i think about a time when i was working at the you know one of my jobs and there was a, a guy a young man there who um just recently had had a baby he was in a relationship but they weren't married and he'd grown up in church but he you could just tell he had never really grabbed a hold of it you know he just and he had abandoned it pretty much and um so I was the the guy, you know, obviously the 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 mockery, you know, and so, you know, people always just make fun of, you know, my faith, you know, and so I just got used to it, and he, you know, never joined in fully, but he never stood up for it either. But I remember one time in particular, we ended up working a Saturday, and on the way out to the parking lot after the the shift was over, you know, he um, was just really overwhelmed with being a new dad. He was probably like twenty five or twenty six. You know, they weren't married and he was feeling stressed from the relationship because it was almost like he it was almost like he was alluding to that they maybe would have broken up had she not gotten pregnant. But right. now they were kind of, you know, in it. And he was just, I mean, really feeling it. And so at that moment, you know, because of, I think, the fact that I had just taken a stance to be a, a believer, a Christian in the middle of that environment, regardless of how people treated me, I had an open communication with him that day and really got to minister to him you know, repentance and just genuine faith in Jesus, you know, and, and here we are, unless the Lord builds the house. I said, brother, you're going to labor in vain. You know, you got to come back to that place of knowing Jesus. And man, really got to pray with him and minister to him that day. He ended up leaving the job within the next few weeks to move on to something else. And, you know, I don't know how it worked out for him, but I believe it was a divine appointment from the Lord to be there, to be able to give him that that word that day that, man, it was a long time in the making, though. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I had several, a lot of opportunities like that throughout the years there, but it always came at a cost and it came at a cost of really enduring, 
you know, those hardships. That's why Paul reminds us, as a good soldier of Christ, endure hardship. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we've got to let our conversation always be gracious and attractive so that we can give a right response in the right time, you know? Yeah. um, (laughs) Oftentimes, those same co-workers are the one that loves you, and they say it, and they don't even know what they're saying, Mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, I've seen it, um, you know, I've seen it. And I just know when they speak stuff like that, man, Lord, you're, I just praise the Lord. I, I say like, that's you. Because these are the same people that are, you know, trying to bring you down. They're trying to, you know, cause conflict. They're doing all of these things. And just for no reason. <laughs> it's, like the, it's like, you know, you'll have two weeks good. And then the next two weeks is like, they're out to attack you. And um, yeah, then, you know, the Lord moves somebody along. He messes up that that unity that they, well, not really unity, but just that pack. little click they'll have, yeah. Yeah, he does that. And then after, they just ended up with you. <laughs> <laughs> but there was just one opportunity that we had. Um, we were all working in close quarters and, but the conversation came up about somebody saw a video clip about some, um, I guess the question pro- posed, um, women are more involved in church ministry than men. And then they just started to bash men and stuff. And I'm right there, I'm listening on. But um, after we were finishing this task, I just said, man, Lord, under my breath, I really like an opportunity to, to get into this. And yeah, one of my coworkers, when they were all moving out, one of my coworkers said to me, hey, so what do you think about this? And I was like, oh, yeah. And I just said it like, yes. And <laughs> and at that moment, I was able to have like my coworker's attention for like, say the f- five minutes, because I was mindful, we're on the clock, so I didn't want to like, you mm-hmm. know, keep it long. But I, um, but I was able to touch on areas and show where, you know, it come back to cries, it comes back to... You know, um, men men are not bad. They're not bad, mm-hmm. and and there are men that are faithfully seven. The um, the ones that you're not seeing that's not you know where in the church there's more women than men is you know hey, but there are men mm-hmm. that are serving the Lord and faithfully serving, and um, so but in 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 that time I was just able from from just over the time to probably give a point of everybody's personality because mm-hmm. it, so it wasn't really yeah i'm addressing that that topic but i'm also addressing like the sinners in your life hey you mm-hmm. all need to come to the lord right, right. so i and over and, and and had i not over the, the the time being there just listen saying okay this is where this person's at this is where they're at and just praying for them and and just get that opportunity. And they all were like, you knew, like, they were being ministered to. You right. Know, you knew that. Right. You, I, I, I knew that at that moment. And, and yeah, they would, um, so I had uh, those opportunity. And then also, to to there's times that you just have to, you know, give a harsh word immediately. You know, give a, give a rebuke. Mm-hmm. So it's not always about the good you know, or waiting for time, but there's something like, hey, no, I well, And this this is where letting our conversation be gracious, like I said, once again, influenced by the grace of God. Mm-hmm. And His grace has appeared, it teaches everybody to deny, deny ungodliness, according to the book of Jude, and worldly lust, and to live righteously and soberly in this present age. That's what His grace is here to do. So if His grace is working in us, that's always His agenda. Like I said, sometimes it may come through just listening, you know, and waiting for the Lord to provide an opportunity. Sometimes it may come in just holding your peace. Mm-hmm. There's been several times where I know that the Lord had just stopped me in the middle yeah. of something and said, "Look, just stop right there." You know, um, I think about you know if we can think about some biblical examples of fantastic communicators, and obviously we can look to Jesus as an awesome communicator. Right. But there was also a time when he just held his tongue. Yeah. You know, and um, and he let the Lord. You know, he he, he said, you know, that vengeance is God's. Mm-hmm. You know, and so but then there's times where. There's been some fantastic communicators in the Bible as well who spoke a word that cut right to the heart. I think about Stephen, you know, and he spoke that word. He stood up. It cut everybody. You know, they stoned him to death. (laughs) I'm not looking for that to happen to me. But you see that men who were stirred up or people who were stirred up by the Holy Spirit spoke at the right time, and they spoke a word that was in season. 
you know, and so I think that's really key for us as believers in our marriages and our families and in the workplace to just let the grace of God work in us to work through us. If our genuine desire is to be a vessel for him, then he'll work those times and seasons out on what we're going to communicate, how we'll communicate, you know, at that time. And so it's not a one size fits all yeah. response. And so I'm not advocating at all for going into a job and, you know, keeping your faith on the down loan. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that we have to be gracious in everything mm-hmm. that we do. Mm-hmm. Let the grace of God work in us and work through us. And it may involve just keeping your head down and doing your work for a, for a, for a, a segment of time yeah. to earn people's respect. You know, right. it's totally different than the marketplace. You know, we we go to the streets, we go to the jails, we go to the nursing homes. You know, we we do a ton of marketplace ministry. I, I always tell people honestly that the hardest place to witness usually is in your workplace and in your family. Yeah. Because when we're in the marketplace, it's it's almost like, you know, we don't really know those people and right. it's just easier and we're there with an agenda. Yeah. Okay, we're going yeah. out to the street corner to preach, to witness. And so but even and then I think the grace of God still can teach us how to be better communicators. Mm-hmm. You know, um but yes, it's more of a of a of a one tool out there. You, you just herald your voice as the word of God says to to preach, you know, to lift up your voice. But the the growth and the challenge is now to let the grace of God work in us and through us, through the workplace, through the marriages, yeah. through the relationships where you're going to have to see these people all the time. Yeah. You're going to see them multiple times, you know, mm-hmm. providing that, you know, nothing happens, you know, nobody passes away, yeah. which I've had that happen at my right. workplace where, you know, praise the Lord, I, I was able to share with somebody before they passed away. And so it's just being... Willing to let the grace of God work through us so we can have the right response for everyone at every time. It's, man, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, in, this is where the walk of faith right. comes into play. We've yeah. got to continue to grow. Let him increase, as John the Baptist said, and we got to decrease yeah. in some form or fashion like that. I don't <laughs> know if I got that backwards, but, you know. So any closing thoughts on that, honey? Yeah, I know it, we're just. Um, I mean, this is it's a, just this a, just a, like a basic scratch conversation is, of just this, this is because you could go really deeper really in deep, it, yeah. and you know it'd be nice to really get probably uh, um, you know you know one of our pastors that's mm-hmm. really you know um, yeah. There's a lot, lot more to go into with <laughs> yeah. this for sure, especially to, on the marriage side. Yeah, I think you could really it'd be talk nice more. to get one of, one of them on board and just mm-hmm. be able to you know have a nice conversation in regards to that, but. Um, I think key point is it's okay to start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my sermons. Yes. If, if I mean, it's it, always okay well, to start. I, I think that's a good point before we close out. Cause like I said, I have before gone into something maybe a little harsh, a little too forward, you know, and just totally shut down, you know, uh, an opportunity. At least I felt like that right. with people before where they just kind of read you one way, but the Lord, you know, it's okay to start over. You know, give it time. Things will heal. God will bring those things back yeah. around. And so just okay. because something's not going the way that we want doesn't mean that it can't turn out for good. Yeah. I yeah. think he'll work those things out. He will. Yeah. And in the marriage, <laughs> just say you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, a kind word yeah. turns away wrath. That's where we started. You know, a kind word. It's always better I'd rather sow words of kindness than I would harsh words. Right. You know what I mean? And if, even if it means that we look a little weaker to other people, you know, but I'd rather see, I'd rather people see me as somebody that's compassionate and, you know, slow to speak and slow to anger, right. you know, and, uh, you know, and like I said, I know that that wasn't naturally who I was before I came to the Lord. So he's been doing a work yeah. and praise him for a lovely, awesome wife who's been ba- <laughs> bearing with me over the last seven years. Yeah. Yes. Praise God for that. Yes. All yes. right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there because, like I said, this could go on for a long time. But just want to encourage you guys out there if you're, um, you know, have been really believing the Lord for a breakthrough in your marriage, in your family, in your workplace, you know, as an effective communicator, man, just get into the Word of God. Let His Word get into you and refine you and change you. Let His grace begin to stir you up just to be a compassionate and a, you know, a, a thoughtful minister. 
somebody who can actually attend to the issues and the needs that are in people's lives rather than just what we see on the outside. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Samuel that men look at the outward appearance, but God's always looking at the heart. So I think that should really be our goal as believers as well. So until next time, this is Pastor Roy and Kim Mendes reminding you to keep your eyes on the prize and your knees on the ground. God bless.